Hug two or three people around you. Make sure it's not there. I see an apple pen, snatch it. Wait a minute. Oh, well, who's got an apple pen I can borrow? <laughs> Thank you, bro. Turn your Bibles. It's all right. We're going to get this equipment to work. Amen. You know, you know I'm going to find it just as soon as, you know I'm going to find it, right? <laughs> Pair of this apple pen, yes. Jeremy's pen just got Holy Spirit anointed right there. Hallelujah. I don't know if I should give that pen back to you now. Every time you touch something, it's going to bring money to you. Amen. Am I connected? Turn your Bibles. I'll talk to you today. I'm, I just got back from GOE, powerful, uh, powerful time with God and uh, I want to encourage every one of you to next year in October, you and your spouse get ready to come to the uh, mountains of uh, Missouri, Branson, Missouri, and uh, spend a few days in the presence of God, you and your spouse, but at the same time, enjoy the beautiful, I mean, the scenery, the mountains, incredible. Uh, it was beautiful, wasn't it? Let me tell you something. I got to meet with, I sat across the table with a pastor in his late 70s, Dr. Corey Barker, who led Governor George C. Wallace to the Lord in Montgomery, Alabama, the most racist governor of Alabama. How many know who Governor Wallace is? Have you ever seen the movie Forrest Gump? You seen the movie Forrest Gump? Governor Wallace was that man standing in front of the University of Alabama to keep black kids from going to that college. That's Governor Wallace, one of the most racist men you'll ever meet. And you got to know how God works. When God's ready to convert you, he's going to find somebody to find, hear his voice to go after you. And he said something that I thought was very interesting, and you should write it down, that the modern-day church is trying to make a decision for Christ, but they're not getting converted into Christianity. Am I connected? Decision. Everything's about a decision, but not a conversion. There's a difference. Corey Barker was pastoring an 1,800-member church in Nashville, Alabama, Nashville, Tennessee. Going down to PTL in the Big Jim Baker days and preaching down there every week. Built this church out of nothing to 1,800 members. A prophet named John Wesley Fletcher calls him up, says, I'm sending the private jet to pick you up. Meet, I'm going to fly you to Montgomery, Alabama to be with me in service at First Assembly of God, Montgomery. He said, okay, gets on the plane, flies to First Assembly of God, Montgomery, Alabama, sitting there with the prophet, 120, 112 people in the church. He said that the prophet got up, preached. When he got done preaching, he said, I want Corey Barker to stand up. He stood up. He said, I want to introduce you to your new pastor, Dr. Corey Barker, Pastor Corey Barker. And he's like, um, no, I'm not your pastor. <laughs> I pastor in Nashville, Assembly of God, Nashville, Tennessee. So... 
the deacons came to him right after service says, okay, the prophet says, you're our pastor. When are you going to start pastoring? He said, oh, no, no, I'm pastoring in Nashville. I got a tent revival. I got to leave here every night this week. I'm going to be in a tent revival for my church. He said, every night in Nashville, Tennessee, all five deacons and their wives were in the front while I was preaching at this tent revival in Nashville. He said, what are you doing? He said, you're our pastor. You need to come on. So he says, I went down there, and he said, I preached everything I could preach so they wouldn't vote me in. I preached they're going to hell, da, da, da. He said, after done preaching, they said, a unanimous vote. He said, so I was feeling God's doing something in a Kairos moment, so I accepted the job, and I leave an 1,800-member church, go to 100-member church, Montgomery, Alabama. So said, I'm sitting in my office three-day fasting, trying to say, why did you send me to Montgomery? There's no reason for me to be here. I had a great church, great things. He said, the Holy Spirit came and said, I want you to go into the capital of Montgomery, Alabama, and I want you to walk into Governor George Wallace's office, and I want you to look him in the face and tell him he's going to hell. He's full of hatred, and he hates black people. He said, you want me to go into the talk to the governor of Alabama and tell him what you just told me to tell him? He said, yep. So he said he called the secretary, got her on the phone. He said, I need to have a meeting with Governor George C. Wallace. She said, who is this? as Pastor Corey Barker from First Assembly of God, Montgomery. She said, what you need a governor for? He said, I need to tell him he's going to hell. He's full of hatred, and he hates black people. He said, silence, didn't he? He said, she comes back on. She said, sorry, I was crying. She said, I just started this job three, four days ago. God told me to take this position and intercede for the governor that he was going to send a real man of God that's not afraid to talk to him. She said, I got you five minutes on this calendar. When, when can I come? She, she said, right now, you got five minutes. He f said, I drove right down the street, walked in. He said, I walked into Governor George Wallace's office, sitting behind that big old desk. He put his glasses down like this. What can I do for you, sonny boy? He said, you can't do nothing for me. I didn't come here for me. He said, then what you hear my office for? He said, George, you're going to hell. God sent me here to tell you you're going to hell. You're full of hatred, and you hate black people. He said, George Wallace looked at me, fell over to the desk, and started weeping and crying. He said, I'm talking about wailing, saying, have mercy, God. It's true. It's true. And he said, I only had five minutes, four minutes. He's still crying. I, Governor, Your Honor, I only got five minutes. And, and, and crying and feeling bad doesn't make you converted. He said, son, whose name's on that door when you walked in here? He said, it said, Your, Honor, uh, Your Honorable George C. Wallace. He said, sit down until I'm finished. And he said, he leaned over and cried and cried and cried and cried. He said, it's true. I am full of hatred and bitterness. He said, what do I need to do, preacher? He said, you need to confess Jesus Christ as your Lord. You need to ask him to forgive you for all your ignorance, to come into your heart. And then you need to make a public confession to everybody what happened to George Wallace. He said, okay, how about your church Sunday? I'll come to your church Sunday and I'll do it publicly. He said, Okay, you got to build me a ramp. I'll build you a ramp. Well, by Sunday, he said, in Montgomery, he said, we're going to run 100 people. Church seat, probably 800, only had 100 people. Balcony. I talked to the governor on Saturday, and he says, look, why don't we put it on television? You, have, you do ABC and CBS. You got a microwave dish? He said, I do. He said, well, I do a show where I talk to and dress the state of Alabama. Why don't we just put it on TV and I address the whole state at one time? The state of Alabama. He said, oh, she, okay, we'll do it. So he said, when we get to church Sunday, it's packed. Balconies packed. Windows are open. It's packed everywhere. TV cameras are right there. George Wallace calls me and says, I'm scared. <laughs> he, said, what do you, he said, what do you mean? He said, I won't do it unless you go up there with me and hold my hand. He said, I'll go with you. He said, so they... We wheeled Governor Wallace on the platform, looking in the camera. I'm holding his hand. He said he looked in the camera and he said, a preacher came in my office and told me I was going to hell and I was full of hatred. 
and I don't love black people. And he said, and it's true. When I laid in the puddle of my blood, I hated everybody, not just black folk. I hated everybody. But this preacher showed me a blood that's stronger than the blood of hatred, the blood of Jesus Christ. And he said, I want to ask the state of Alabama to forgive me, but I've asked Jesus in my heart. And then he said, I want to ask every black person in this state to forgive me for my stupid, my ignorance. I'm sorry. He said, a revival fell in my church. He said, the next Sunday, here's an all-white church. I had 100 black families baptized, 50 families every week, black families, into that baptistry. As healing came across Alabama for Governor George Wallace. And he said, that's the difference between making a decision and being converted. And he said, what I'm afraid of in the kingdom of God right now is people are making decisions but can still sleep in unwed beds, can still live in racism, still want to have hatred, uh, still want to be angry. He said, but if you ever get converted by the blood of Jesus Christ, you cannot stay the way you are. And I'm sitting there listening thinking the most racist governor of Alabama, even God can find a way into his heart. The difference between religion and kingdom is how you can forgive those who injustice you. Religious people only know the form of God. They know his franchise. They don't know his favor. It's interesting to me that in the book of Genesis in the Garden of Eden, that God gave Adam everything in that garden, and then there were four rivers that left the throne of that garden, the Bible said, and went out into the land, four rivers of favor, God's favor. And I heard somebody ask this question. It's interesting to me that, Mo, that uh, Adam never followed the flow of favor and see what God had for him outside the garden because he couldn't get his mind off the one thing he couldn't have in the garden. Really, really made me start thinking about where we are in the last day. So turn your Bibles to 2 Peter. I believe there needs to be convictions in the kingdom of God. I think this religious come every now and then, uh, picking certain places. No, you need to get planted somewhere, and you need to get ready because the Antichrist is coming, and he's coming hard. And you have a, a, a little bit of economic reprieve. Don't get stooped and, and stupid. Donald Trump ain't your answer. Listen to me. Donald Trump's not the answer because America is not your savior. Yeah, we got a little maybe eight-year reprieve economically right now, and that's good, but don't make a mistake and not think that it's not coming to the end, and I'm going to show you where we are, and you see it now more than ever, and you better get your mind off of what color your skin is. You better get your mind off of what denominations on the lapel, and you better get covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to talk to you straight up. Your excuses ain't working no more with God. Write it down. My excuses ain't working anymore with God. You know where you are. You're the most informed generation. You're the most informed people. To be ignorant right now of the last days is your fault. Get over who hurt you and get connected to who healed you. Write it down. Get over what's hurt you. Who's hurt you. Who's lied about you. Who's cheated on you? Get over who's hurt you and start getting connected to what's healed you. The blood of Jesus Christ. Well, you don't know. I don't care. 
But I had to give up. You still got breath in your body? There's still lung, breath in your lungs? Then God can get back anything you've lost through someone else's injustice. But the one thing God won't walk with is bitterness. Go to 2 Peter chapter 2. Can we talk a little bit? Do you want to learn? We're talking about telling the devil I changed my mind. Tell the enemy I've changed my mind. I'm going to talk to you today, continuing where we left off. The children of Israel are moving into a new place. We're moving into a new season. If we don't get serious right now and quit being religious, we're going to get blinded. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 12. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 12. But these like natural brute beasts made to be caught and destroyed speak evil of the things they do not understand. And they will utterly perish in their own corruption. We're talking about the wicked, the wicked spirit, the unclean spirit. People that don't like authority. Verse 12, verse 13. Then we'll receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. They are spots and blemishes, carousing in their own deceptions while they feast with you. And he's talking about the last days, these spirits and people. He's talking about people here, not demons, people. Look at somebody say he's talking about people. He said, these people carouse with you in the daytime, and they feast with you, and they act like they're with you, but they're not. They're carousing with spirits behind your back. They're full of deception. They act like your friend. They're not your friend. They act like they know God. They don't know God. They, they want all, they're always seeking a prophetic word, but they're full of pathetic spirits. People who are always looking for a prophecy don't know their, their, their own identity. When you know who you are in Christ, you don't need someone prophesying to you. You can prophesy yourself. You can speak to your own future. You can talk to your own crisis. You can cast out your own bitterness. You ain't got to stay broke and wait for somebody to come and tell you you ain't going to be broke no more. You can get up right now and say, I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of being depressed. I'm tired of being weak. In the blood of the name of Jesus Christ, all things pass away. Behold, all things become new. I don't care if your mama ain't raising you. There's a God who's trying to stand you up and raise you. Young people, they're in the schools. They act like they're going to be the, the athlete. They're going to be the, 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 the smart kid. They're going to be the one everybody wants to hang with. They're carousing in the daytime, but at night they're full of deception. Having eyes full of adultery. Having eyes full of adultery, that didn't say they're, they're, they're committing adultery. Read that in its context. They're not committing adultery. What kind of eyes do they have? The eyes of an adulteress, and, and that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls they are. He said they're not committing adultery. They got the spirit of the adulteress in them. And because of that, they cannot cease from sin. This sin is not sexual sin. It's instability, enticing unstable souls. Uh, they can't make up their minds. They're playing the fence. This is what he's talking about. They, they, they're going to they're gonna go to church and, and shout with the church folk, but then they're going to go to the bar and be like the bar folk. See, they're, they're enticed with an adulterous sight. Uh, what does that mean? That means that they can't ever stay married to where they are because they're always thinking something's better down the street. They're, they're, in, in your marriage, you have to decide in covenant, we together, whether we don't always like each other or not, or you're going to get the adulterous spirit. What's that? You're going to let somebody else keep talking to you until you lay in another bed's covenant. It happens mentally. It happens sexually. They have a heart trained in covetousness. They got covetous practices and are accursed children. 
That's why the that, that's why the hardest thing to do coming out of the world of sin, if you don't get touched by the blood and the power and the passion of the of the cross, and you don't fall in love with God that is greater than the love of your carousing spirit, and you think just making a decision to follow Jesus don't mean you're going to follow him, but you get converted into his way, that's why you see people that have this spirit on them can't go to bed at night. They can't go to sleep. Why? They can't shut their mind down. Why? Because their spirit that's got a hold of them has laid claim to their mind knowing that if they ever get into deep sleep, God might visit their bedroom and put his deeds in their heart that when they wake up, they'll have a transformation of a confirmation of a praying intercessor. That's why you go around at night. They, they, they run in the night. This, this adulterous mind, it's, it's stuck in a spirit. And they need deliverance. Can't play the fence. So watch what he says. These are cursed children. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray. Following the way of Balaam. There's my first talk. Number one, Balaam. Write it down. Following the spirit of who? Okay, Balaam. All right, we'll leave that there. The son of Bor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. But he was rebuked for his iniquity and a dumb donkey. I like the King James here, but I won't say it. Speaking with a man's voice, restrained the madness of this prophet. Now look, verse 17. This is, this is, your, this is how you know Verse 17, look, look what it is. Look what they are. These are wells without water. Now look up here a moment. What is he saying here? He said they look like they got something, but when you go to dip in them, they're full of nothing else. They're not what they're they're portraying like they got God, but they really don't have God. They still have the way of the world in the well. They're wells without the spirit. These churches out here, they're all starting up. They got all this good stuff, but they're wells without water. Why? They're, they have decisions, but don't have conversions. They talk about we do life together. We do life well. Get up in a life group. Nothing wrong with that, except it's all about doing life and not becoming life. For Jesus said, I've come that you might have life, not do life, but be life. So anywhere you go, you bring deliverance to people around you. I did look at somebody and say, I'm about to set somebody free when I enter their environment. I ain't trying to adjoin myself to you. I'm trying to get what's in me on you. These are wells without water, clouds carried by tempests. The clouds carried by tempests. I said, what's that mean, Lord? He said, they look like they're bringing the spirit, but they're really bringing you a storm. Some of you are facing storms in your life and you're facing problems in your life and it has nothing to do with anything but the people you let come to your house and come to your life. There are some friends you need to just put the door, a sign on the door and say, do not disturb, I'm not home. When I go to a hotel room, I got a little sign and if I don't want the maid in my room, I put it out front so it says, do not disturb. They can't come in my room, Why? They have to call my phone and say, we were coming to clean your room, but we can't clean your room because there's a sign on the door that now forbids me from coming into your room because when you pay for your night, that's your territory, your property. I can't enter without your permission. I was looking at that. God said, some of you need to take that off the door when I'm trying to come to your house. Uh, and some of you need to put that on the door when the devil is coming to your house. And he needs to see a sign on your door and say, uh-uh. This guy ain't home no more. Addiction guy ain't home no more. Lust guy ain't home no more. Do not disturb. Go clean somebody else's room. I made my own bed. What would he say? Verse 18. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness... They allure through the lust of the flesh. Watch people who stimulate your flesh and not your spirit. Through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise you liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. If 
by, by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. For if another they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. He said, if it had been better for them not to have known the way. Look up here, righteous, you religious. Watch me. Look up here. Look up here, all you nominal religious people, because I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you something, and you're going to be mad at me. You might not even be saved. You might got church saved. But if you don't got a heart beating for Christ, you don't, you don't, you got the good life, you didn't get the best life. The good life's the Christ life. Look what he said. It would have been better for you never to darken the doors of a church. He said, Look what he said, verse 21. I didn't say it. For it would have been better that they had never known the way of righteousness and then having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. Because he said it would have been better for you to come to God and say, I never heard about you. Than you to come and say, oh, I grew up in church and I knew it, but I decided to do it my way. Go, go over to the book of Jude. Go over to the book of Jude. First guy we're talking about, first guy we see that shows up here is Balaam. Go over to the book of Jude before you get so depressed I can't talk to you. Look at two or three people and say, it's time to grow up. Tell, three, tell two or three people, not one, tell two or three time to grow up. You're married to the person, don't tell them, they'll be mad at you. Tell somebody else. It's time to grow up. Tell them. Time to learn. Time to get ready for the rapture. Tell somebody. You're not telling nobody. I ain't doing, I ain't going to. I see somebody tell somebody. Go to Jude. Go to the book of Jude. Jude, Jude chapter 1. If you go to Jude chapter 2, you're in another book. <laughs> They're in a Jude chapter 2. Jude chapter 1, verse 5. Quickly, quickly. But I want to remind you, though, once you were, once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. So you can be delivered and still be destroyed. I, I hope you just heard that. You can be delivered and still be what? Delivered. God, I went to the thing. Delivered. Delivered means you've been coming out. But God's not into your deliverance. He's into, he destroys you because of your belief. So he said, look, once knew the Lord and you were delivered, afterward destroyed you. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, that's Genesis 6, we'll deal with it later, but left their own abode, he has reserved an everlasting change under darkness for the judgment of the great day. That's Genesis chapter 6. That's when the sons of God, uh, the, son, the daughters of men, begin to let the fallen ones procreate with them. They were birthing children with polluted blood. These children did not have human blood. They didn't have... Okay, then they became giants. They were supernatural beings. If you want to know where demons come from, demons are the spirits of these children that died to have no place. So now they work for the dark one. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, verse 7, as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a smaller manner to these having been given themselves over to sexual immorality. There's always a sign where sexual immorality gets out of control and af gone after strange flesh. Trans this is all this homosexuality, transgenders. This is all this 72 genders in Canada. Yeah, Canada, yeah, we just sat with Canadians at my table. What did... What did uh, Shalane tell us who's a ca Canadian citizen well over 50 genders well that's what I asked you and I are full of wisdom I asked the same kind of big question she says I don't know the Christians don't believe it they tried to pass a law saying that parents can't call their children boy or girl until they decide
But don't get so don't get so don't get so upset. Cause if you are for Caitlyn Jenner and how it feels. You are part of this group that we're talking about. Well, we just got to love everybody. My Bible didn't tell me that. My Bible didn't tell me I have to love everybody. It said God loves everybody. Then it says in, in, in Psalms 119, God loves them that loves his laws. And said, and there's no offense in them when they love my laws. Verse 8, he said, okay, look, strange flesh. Did you know they're trying to pass a law, and I think they might have in Canada, that you can marry your pet? Now, I, 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 I like dogs, but I don't like them that much. See, you're, you're laughing because America, that sounds strange, but that's our neighbor. That's right. You know, I, just, I, I preached in Vancouver. I'm going to Montreal. That's the country right beside us, and that leader is wicked. You know how I know he's wicked? He's for all this delude spirit. Everybody has rights. That's what they're trying to say. Well, now, if I love my cat, I can marry. Now, watch. You can marry your pet, and they call it a divine God marriage. So you can leave your dog your inheritance. That means the wife didn't get it. The dog got it. See, uh, Bishop, why are you talking to us like this? Because you can go to this church down here and get a cupcake, but you're going to stay spiritually fat. I'm giving you some vegetables. Why? Because you're about to have authority. You're about to go home and take your children back. You're about to go home and take your money back. You're about to go home and take your mind back. You're about, to, you're about to wake up right now and know there's not a devil in hell that can stop you from what God has already preordained for you to be. And it don't matter because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. It don't matter what color you are. God wanted you the exact color you're supposed to be. When you know who you are, so does hell. He said, look. Sexual morality, gone after strange flesh, are set forth in a, as an example, suffering, vengeance of eternal fire. Verse 8, likewise also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. You can't be in the kingdom and hang around with trashing people that trash dignitaries, mayors, presidents. Governors. It said it right here. Reject authority. Policeman pulls you over. I don't care if he pulled you over for the color of your skin. You yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yeah, but yeah, but but I wouldn't do that. Don't matter. You gonna live, not die. You gonna obey the word. That's why they try to get Jesus say, hey man. Caesar tells us to pay taxes, but we're, you say we're in the kingdom. What shall we do? He said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, but render unto God what is God's. Jesus picks a disciple named Judas who he knew would betray him and knew he was a thief. He picks the guy and gives him the money back. Here. You be the treasurer. Ain't he a thief? Yeah. You don't give the money bag to a thief. But when you in the kingdom and you understand kingdom theology, he's laughing because that money bag ain't his source. 
Steal all you want. When God needs to bless me, he'll get five loaves and two fish to multiply. If I need to pay my taxes, I can go fishing and find gold in every one of those fish. I, that little money bag is a resource, but I've been connected to the source. I mean, you like to come over here and get connected to the source, uh, and your job ain't no longer your resource. Uh, I mean, nobody can steal from you again. Why? When God ready you to have it, you're going to get it. Tuition, everything paid for. Let's go. Likewise, also, look, these dreamers, they speak evil against dignitaries. Yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he dis disputed about the body of Moses, dare not bring against him a rivaling accusation but said, the Lord rebuke you. What's he telling you this for? Because Michael was a lesser angel in heaven than Lucifer. And he said, if Lucifer, who is now a rejected citizen of heaven, but in a position higher than Michael, Michael would not bring accusation against his leadership. But these speak evil of what, watch verse 10. But these people that are in this spirit, they speak evil of whatever they do not know. Whatever they, they know naturally, like brute beasts in these things, they corrupt themselves. Verse 11, woe to them, for they have gone the way of who? Number two, the way of Cain. Have run greedily in the era of Balaam, when I write, you switch. They've gone the greedily era of Balaam for profit and perish in the rebellion number three of who? Korah. Now, I don't know what you're learning here is this. These are going to be the last demonic spirits in the last day church. Cain, Balaam, Korah. We ain't done. Go over to Revelation chapter 2. They're just showing to you in the Bible so when I preach this, you don't think I'm just picking on you. Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. When you go to the book of Revelation and you start reading this book, you get the seven churches in the first three chapters. First of all, you need to come to the persuasion that no prophet wrote this book. Jesus wrote this book. So you, when you go to the first verse, it says the revelation of Jesus Christ. You see that? Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. You just need to settle that. This is book dictated by your king for the last day church so this is not john's book this is jesus's book on the end so now we know there's seven churches jesus tells him about the seven church age and he's over here in verse eight uh, chapter two and he says and, and to the angel of the church of thyatara write these things says the son of god who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like a fine brass. Watch what he said, verse 19. I know your works. You know what he's watching? What you do. Love, you love service. You got faith. And you're patient. And as for you, as, as for your works, the last are more than the first. My God, he's bragging on them. Look what he said. I know your works. What kind of works do they have? What, what, what kind of works? Look what they have. Love. What else did he say? Number two. What else did he say? Look at your service. Woo. Number three. What else did he say? I see your works. Look at your faith. Number four. <clears throat> what did he say? Patience, which is perseverance, right? Is that what he said? I love your works. I love your services. I see you love faith. I see you love patience. And he said, and let me tell you something, guys. You are doing it. The last is greater than the first. He said, man, God, what kind of church? That's the church I want to go to. They walk in love. They got great service. They got servants who work the house. They got great faith. They walk in great perseverance. And then comes Jesus. But nevertheless, verse 20, I have a few things against you. And 
here's what I have against you. You let that woman, Jezebel, you allow her to prophesy, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and to eat the things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent, but they would not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed. And those who commit adultery with her, you better watch out. Look, look, look. There's your number fourth problem in the last days. Now, this is what your Bible tells you is going to be alive and well in the last day church. The doctrine of Balaam, the doctrine of Cain, the doctrine of Korah, and the doctrine of Jezebel. This doctrine of Jezebel is more than the Jezebel in the Old Testament, okay? This doctrine of Jezebel here, this doctrine is more than the, the seductive spirit of the Jezebel of the Old Testament. It's matured. The, the, the Old Testament Jezebel is not near as dangerous as this New Testament Jezebel spirit, okay? Because if you study this Jezebel spirit right here, it's the doctrine of the gospel of appeasement. This is what Jesus said. I got a problem because you're preaching and cheapening grace. You're telling everybody I'm okay with everybody. You're telling everybody you can live, do, say, and be. God's okay. He is not angry. That's unscriptural. Bishop, this is heavy. This is truth. If you don't know how to discern what is the doctrine of Balaam, what is doctrine? What, is the do what does the word doctrine mean? What does the word doctrine mean? Just give you a little teaching here. Give you a little Bible teaching. What does the word doctrine mean? Just so you write it down. Ready? This is what doctrine means. It means a belief or set of beliefs held or taught by a group of people, a church, or a political party. Doctrine means what I'm believing. You can call yourself a Baptist, but you're not a Baptist until you believe the Baptist doctrine. Baptist doctrine is once saved, always saved. That's one of their doctrines. They believe that the, the gifts of the Spirit are, were manifested for the apostles but died out somewhere in the church age. They, they're, they are, they're overly focused on evangelism, underly focused on the gifts. Catholics, I don't know. You talk to the Pope. They believe a lot of stuff. Lutherans, they have a doctrine, a belief system. Every, doc, every denomination, which denomination means to dominate a man with my belief system. That's why Jesus never comes up with denomination. He comes up to kingdom. Denomination Every one of them was birthed from the other one. So you have to understand then that the first church was the, would, would have been the Catholic church, would have been the first church, Roman church. Peter was the uh, first pope. But then when the church was established, there was only one church. That church was everywhere. It wasn't divided into all these different denominations. But what happens is every church age, uh, every denominational age, uh, got stuck in their own success and prosperity, and instead of losing and following the ways of God, they begin to create a formula or a franchise to protect not the name of God, but the name of the denomination. And it grew out that the word Methodist was the, what happened with the Methodists. The Methodists got filled with the whole, was seeking a new method. They said, we want more of God. And every generation began to ask, is there more than the franchise, Okay. 
Every generation would start asking. There'd be a group of young people getting in a room somewhere going, is there more? Let's read the Bible. Let's see if there's more. And they start asking for more. And all of a sudden, God would show up in that prayer meeting. They'd get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Or they'd get some of the gifts of the Spirit. And that what happened was they'd go back to the franchise and say, we were in our room praying and this happened. And we spoke in tongues and this happened. And the doctrine of that denomination would shut that down because it broke their franchise. Uh, and so then groups of people left uh, called a remnant. And they get over here and they start started a new group called the Methodists. It's church history 101. What people don't know is the Baptist denomination started in a Pentecostal divine movement. Every denomination started out with the gift of the Spirit and enfranchised the gift out for growth. Out of the Baptist church, 19... 10 Azusa Street young black man began to get hungry for things and he heard that we're going to have a teaching in a church about the Holy Spirit and it was a white church and black folk couldn't go but that didn't stop this man he sat outside the window with his notepad and listened to the teaching of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Every day they saw him out there listening about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and one day it started raining and the preacher felt bad for him and went out there and said, hey, why don't you come in and sit in the foyer? At least you're not getting wet. Didn't get mad. Didn't say, hey, equal rights. No, you know why? He wanted something that was higher than what men could give him. He wanted a baptism of a supernatural portion. And it goes on, the story goes on that he learned everything he could learn in that foyer and out there by that window. And he got his group together in his house and started a prayer meeting seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it said that the God began to show up at C Sizemore's house. I think I'm saying his name right. Seymour's house. It said the anointing started going, look. White folk, black folk, Spanish folk started showing up. It said the power of God got, the house got so full of the power of God that said when the, when the tram stopped to let people on and off work and they stood on the sidewalk that his house was connected to, they'd fall out into the power of the Holy Ghost. It's called the Azuzu outpouring. Every Spirit-filled denomination you know right now came out of that rejected black man's prayer meeting. Somebody shout, look at God. Because when God's ready to do something, uh, there ain't nobody in any color or any opinion can stop what God's going to do for you. I dare look at four or five people and say, I'm about to come up at this thing. And you can't stop it. Tell somebody, you can't stop what God's going to do for me. You can't stop what God's going to do. I dare tell you, you can't stop what God's going to do for me. You can't stop what God's going to do for me. You can't stop what God's going to do for me. Oh, you can try to block it. You can try to hinder it. But I got news for you. If God's going to bless me, you can't curse me. High five somebody right now. So I'm going to give God some praise. You can't stop my healing. You can't stop my deliverance. You can't stop my, my, my salvation. You can't stop my prosperity, devil. You've been defeated. Get up under my feet right now. You ought to pick your foot up right now and say, get up under there where you belong and know your place in the presence of the almighty God. Pick your foot up and say, get up under there right now. Y'all need to go home and get you some scotch. You know that, that masking tape? Whatever's oppressing you, you need to go right on it and stick it on the bottom of your shoe. Why? So every time you take a step, you break the back of whatever you think's got you held down. Racism, lack, poverty, and tell it he's under my feet. He's under. We used to sing that. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. How many know that song? Satan. Look what, yeah, got some old Pentecostals here. Well, you don't understand. You don't know how they're treating me. Bro, 
It don't matter how a government sees you. It don't matter if a white man knows who you are or a black man. It don't matter if you're Latino. If God's got his hand on you, there ain't a human or a devil can stop what God's going to do for you. But you don't know what I lost. Yeah, but you don't know what's on the way. Well, I lost my house. Wait till you see the new apartments God's going to give you, and you're going to get rental income on it. See, you don't know what God is doing, but God knows what he is doing. But if you don't wake up and grow up, and you don't start bringing your friends and your neighbors to a place where they're going to learn what the Antichrist looks like, you're going to get deceived. You don't know what Balaam is. You don't know what Cain looks like. You don't know what Korah looks like. And you don't know what the gospel appeasement looks like. Because you can have love, service, faith, and patience in God. Still not be pleased. Because of your doctrine. When the children of Israel, everything in the, in the Bible is about type, shadow, and example. And when the children of Israel get to the promised land in Numbers, Numbers 13, 33, the Bible said Anak was there and his sons and the giants. So I don't know how the Nephilim spirit slipped through the flood. I don't know if supernaturally Satan pulled out some of those demonic spirits. But in the exodus and entry of the promised land, in Numbers 13, 33, you're going to see that the giants showed back up. What are the giants? The Nephilims. Now, I ain't got time to go into all this, but if you want to learn, you better be back Wednesday night and Sunday and listen to me. If you don't want to learn, there's a bunch of churches over here that give you some cupcakes. Or stay home and put mulch in your flower bed. At least your house will look good when you're there when we all take off in the rapture. And if I'm, and you can, and the key at my house is, I'll tell you later privately. If I, because I ain't going to be here, guys. Y'all have, have fun. I'll leave some food in the refrigerator for you. I got some, I got in my shed there, 20 year shelf life, a bunch of prepper food. I did, I left, I, left, I, bu I bought that just to be an evangelist when I am raptured. Y'all have something to eat. I just got a pastor's heart, and I just want you to be able to eat through the Antichrist. Because you're not going to be able to buy or sell or do anything. This, this, go to Numbers 13, 33. I, I know you're learning it, but you'll get it. You'll slip, flip back and forth. You're doing a good job, though. Just keep doing it. So I have to stop you here, but because you know why? Because we're taught if we don't go but an hour, you know you might come back. If I go a little longer, you might not come back. There they saw the what? Does the Bible say the descendants of Anak came from the, and they were like, we were like grasshoppers in their sight. Look what it says, so in our own sight. It didn't say what they said about them, it's what they said about themselves. This is a type and shadow of why you cannot get where God wants you to go and possess what God wants you to possess. It's not how the devil sees you, it's how you see you. I'm going to close with this, okay, because I know you're in a hurry. you got to get to the buffet. But it is the buffet. <laughs> buy her lunch. Her, buy her lunch. Anybody goes to lunch with her. No, just kidding. <sighs> Look up here. i got to go. These Nephilims. They were, they were a race without Ruach blood. That just means spirit. You know why God says, kill the Amalekites, kill the Amalites, kill the Jebusites, kill the Hittites. Look what he said. You, you, you want to talk about, can you imagine that happening right now? We're going to go to war, kill them all. Oh, my God, they have rights. They have rights. This is just how God talks to his leader. I want you to go over there into the Malkites. I want you to kill them. I want you to kill the children. I want you to kill the dogs. 
And anything they touched, wipe them. Joshua, when you go to Jericho, don't take anything out of that city. You leave it in that demonic presence. He said, listen to me, you kill them all. You kill their children. You kill anything. You kill their women. He said, don't let your sons get mingled up with them. Why? Because they got the Nephilim spirit in them. That's the Balaam spirit mingled with something else. Soul ties are strong. You sex them with everything. And every demon in that bloodline, when you had sex with it, now just attached to yours. And the reason why some of you can't come out is because you got so many demons in sexual contact. And you won't get in the blood of Jesus Christ and start confessing, I'm wrong, I shouldn't have done it. And get my mind, get your mind clean from that adulterous spirit. That's why Satan always uses sexual immorality as his attraction, free love. Love ain't free. Ask any married folk that have been married more than five days. Love ain't free. There's times in marriage. Anybody been married more than 12 months? There's times in marriage where you're just like, I don't know. I fell on my head. I never thought that way. I never questioned ours. You know. <laughs> this Nephilim spirit, these fallen angels, were, see, because the Bible says angels can't be given over to marriage, so people have made that, made that a, that's it. You know, well, they can't, they didn't say they couldn't procreate, just said they, they don't have a, they don't have the ability to make covenant. Because they're self-serving. You can't be in a marriage if all you think about is yourself. So if I marry her, then I got to think about her. And then she's got to think about me. But the angels couldn't do that. They weren't created that way. They were not created to serve. They were created to rule. But they were taking these women, birthing children, with no human bloodline. That's why the Bible said Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. You know why Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord? Because God started looking around the earth and he found a man that still had pure Adam blood. A redeemable blood. He found a man who had a redeemable bloodline. It's always been about the blood. That's why hell hates the blood. That's why he shed his blood give you a transfusion. He became what you was so you could become what he is. And these Amalekites and the Malkites and Hittites, they were all the offspring of this Nephilim spring. God said, when you go, you need to just cut, cut them out. Why? They're of another bloodline. They're not of the human Now we in the New Testament, we're in the church, and, and, and he's trying to teach you in the Old Testament. You can't, in the Old Testament, it was physical blood. In the New Testament, it's spiritual blood. And that's why you got to watch how you act spiritually. How you see yourself determines your future. We are, when we saw them, we were grasshoppers in our own sight. None of them but Caleb all of them said we need to run Caleb said no we need to go fight why because God has already given it to us see it's not about does it look like you can win it's do you believe you can I dare you look at somebody and say I believe I'm going to get all that's mine tell for we got to go tell somebody say I believe it's all mine I believe everything God died for I want Come on, say it out loud. Open your mouth. Say, everything that Jesus paid for on the cross, I want now deposited in my spiritual account right now. I want poverty to be eradicated from my bloodline. I want sickness to come, to be cast off my body. Sickness and cancer to leave my body, to be healed. That the broken body of Jesus Christ was to put your body back home. That you shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. 
Who's got a broken body in here right now? Who's got a sickness you're trying to overcome? Fibromyalgia, cancer, sugar diabetes, blood pressure, eye, bones uh, hurting, rheumatoid arthritis. They're all illegal aliens in your body. Tell it to get up out of your head and out of your body. It don't belong here. Well, we don't know, does Jesus still heal? Yes, he does. He is your healer. He don't just heal bodies. He heals minds. He heals money. He heals everything. Give him praise before we go home and say, he's my healer. Tell him three times, you're my healer. Tell him, you're my healer. You're my healer. Tell him, you're my deliverer. You're my deliverer. You're my prosperity. You're my leader. You're my king. Listen, listen, listen. Wednesday night. Hell's going to fight you all day Wednesday. We're going to do communion Wednesday night, baby. We're going to do communion Wednesday night. We, Ron, we're going to do communion. I believe he's going to heal your ears. So Terry will quit yelling at you. <laughs> I was in GOE. They were doing communion. Like we do, you know, we open it up, and I'm holding the whole body of the wafer, and I'm looking at the little blood cup. And I'm listening to the doctor talk. And he, he said, now let's break. And we broke it, and God said, you know, that hurt. That hurt more than I could ever describe to you what that felt like. And I never want you to know, not one slash of a, of a what came on my back you have no idea what went through my body when they ripped my skin I, I, I couldn't even describe it to you but I did it for you and I wailed and hollered and cried passed out from the pain for you I broke my body so yours wouldn't have to to him. I fall to him. You know, I wake up every day and thank God for his healing. I go to bed every night and say, God, thank you for healing Ronnie. Thank you for giving him another day on your plan. He's not my son. I didn't birth him. I don't have any, any blood ties to you, do I? Except that he loves the king I love. And I was holding that cup and he said, this is my and the Holy Ghost said, has Robert ever had communion with you? I said, I can't remember. It's the first question I told April. Somebody go ask Robert to, what did I have somebody ask you today? Have you ever had communion with me? I said, no. I'm scheduling a communion for you. Oh, I feel his presence. You ought to worship. I wouldn't be in a hurry right now because I just felt him leave his throne and walk the aisles. I don't know what you need, but I know who you need on your life. I just felt God, I just felt Jesus step off his throne. And I know enough about kingdom theology that when a king leaves his throne, he's looking for someone to change the station of their life. He's walking the aisle right now. He's walking the aisle right now. He's going to change somebody's station right now. He's walking. He's walking. He's walking. You ought to reach up and touch him. You ought to say, oh God. Change the station of I've run too long. I've run too long. Come home, my child. Tell the devil you changed your mind. Tell him right now. This is called conviction. It's called, it's called this presence. It's heavy, but it's God. Real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Who needs Jesus to change the station of their life? Real quick, real quick. Who, who needs 
to say, Jesus, I'm sorry. I don't know why I keep running, but I want to come home. Daddy, I want to come home. You're heavy right now. He's saying, son, daughter, come home. Come to your senses. There's no good thing out there. It's death, depression, poverty, and pain. Who are you? Quickly, 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 quickly. If you need to touch the hem of his garment, he's walking the airways. profession, God going to tear every devil off your house and off your children. But you got to, you got to have boldness to come and say, I, 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 I've been going the wrong way. Just like Junior here, he come just to make sure. He just, I'm going to make sure. I'm going to come here and make sure. I'm giving you just a few more seconds and I got to go. If you have lost something from the Holy One of Israel, come right now. Come right here, right here. Right here is for you, Charles. Right there, there's the pool for you right there. The water is stirring. God says, if you come, I will meet you here. And I will transform you into a new person. Hurry, hurry, hurry. The pool is stirring. Whoever comes gets whatsoever they need. Come, 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 come. Come, come, say, Lord, I need you. Talk to him, say, Lord, I need you. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me, Jesus, forgive me. Come, 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 come. Hurry, hurry, the door is shutting. The door is shutting. Hurry, just a few more minutes. Just a few more minutes. Quickly, pray. Pray for these. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. Who are you? So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. Who, who needs it? I'm giving you one more so minute. You come, 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 come. But the bishop, I've done it so many times. So this is be the one that sticks. Free. So I can be whole, so I can tell everyone I know you thought I was worth saving. It don't matter, come, come, come. Hurry, so hurry. You came and but changed my, my life. Come on, Neil. You thought I was worth keeping. Some of you leaders go and so you place your hands me up inside. That I was to die for. Come, 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 come. There's a spot right here for somebody. Somebody needs so this spot. Be free so I could be whole. So I could tell. For somebody, it's got your name on it, your your new so place you in life, your newness, inside. your new mind, you your new heart, your new life. I got a place for you right here, but you gotta make so a profession. You, you gotta say, I, I haven't been doing it right, so but I'm gonna do it right. So I, I can, can be whole, so I 
Everybody, praise me. Praise him with me. Praise him with me. So I can be free. So I could be whole. So I could tell everyone. I got, I got, I got two spots. You, you have to, you have to let the past go. All memories of betrayal of hurt, of I'm afraid to be vulnerable because God said you're going to be a new woman. you got to forget the old hurts. Father, I decree these tears are watering the fire of the Holy Ghost to make steam to drive this woman into your presence. Lift both your hands as high as you can. Say, so Jesus, I give you my past, all my hurts, all my betrayals. I ask you now to take them and forgive me of bitterness, unforgiveness. Forgive me for the evils that come out of my mouth. Anger. Come, touch my lips. Oh, Holy Ghost, move. Holy Ghost, move. I got a bow shot. I can be clean. I can be whole. You know what I hear in my mind right now? I hear, I hear, I hear the brush of angels. I hear the sound of holy presence of God. Conviction is here. I got two. Of the Lord is in this place. Why be in a hurry? You came for something. Power and his grace. I got a spot right here for somebody. I can feel the brush of Somebody living on the fence. I see One way at church, another way. Away from church. But I hear the clarion voice of a Galilean man calling your name. Come, 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 come. I got a spot for somebody to quit living in torment, torture, and nightmares, and terrible dreams. There it is. That was your spot, son. Convert him. Change him. Transform him. got another spot here for somebody There's somebody here that's fighting terrible nightmares nightmares mental torment God said I got a spot in the pool for you come 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 maybe you're watching you can't get here but you can touch the screen and say it's me it's me it's me I see a teenager that needs to come and lay here and say I got something at Shabbat, but I lost it when I went back to school right here. The fire of the Lord. I see a housewife. I see a daughter who's full of bitterness, fear, worry. Don't know what the future says. God said this in this spot. It's all settled. Right here. Right there. Right there. All your fears. Everything settled in his presence. Oh, that's for you, son. daughter. That's for you. Let it go. Surely, the presence. I got one more spot here. This is the last spot. You've tried church. You've tried religion. You've gone here. You've gone there. When are you gonna get converted? When are you gonna make up your mind? That's the spot for you. You're financially in disarray. I can fix it in this spot. Do you know where you are? Come, 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 come. Come, 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 come. He's holding the door for you. Just you. Right there. Full of racism, full of anger, full of bitterness, full of fear mad, full of loss, right there, 
fixes it. Well, Bishop, I, I don't want to come. I just want him to fix it. No, 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 no. You ain't got the boldness to make a profession. Why should he fix it in private? Come, 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 come. 30 seconds. 29. 28. 27. 26. 25. 24. Come on. Come on. 20. 15. It's for you. It's for you. Sexual immorality needs to be healed right here. It's for you. There's a door for somebody calling your name. Bishop, I don't like how I'm feeling. No, that's called conviction. It's a good thing. It ain't a bad thing. It ain't a bad thing. God ain't pointing you out to embarrass you. He's convicting you to fix it so he can shine you up in front of the enemy and say what you thought was your trophy is now mine. Right here it is. But, it, but the door's at 10, 9. You better run. 8, 7, 6. You better come quicker than that, son. That door's set. Lewis, you wrestle like a Jacob. This is a Jacob right here, Johnny. His heart seeks God. His flesh seeks hell. He wants to feel approved. God says, I'm going to approve you, son. You stop playing both sides. I got a hand on you. But I need you to put your hand on me. Lewis, you need to repent from every demonic connection and soul ties you've made. You got the heart for God. Now get the mind there too. The door stayed open for you. Everybody pray this prayer with me. Say, Holy Jesus, I love you. I don't want to keep sinning against you. So I ask you now to forgive me of my ignorance, my rebellion. I bind and rebuke the spirit of Balaam on my life right now. I come against the spirit of Cain. I bind up the spirit of Korah. Hallelujah. And Jezebel, you die right now. I'm ready to sell out and plug in to the blood that'll wash me whiter than snow. That I'll stand in your presence clean, 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 clean. I'm clean, I'm clean, I'm clean, I'm clean. I'm clean. In Jesus' name I pray that prayer. Amen, 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 amen. God touched you today, my friend. I forgot your name and I apologize. Anthony, it's a good name. Anthony, stand up. God touched you today. You're not here by accident. If hell had his way, Anthony, you'd already be six feet under pushing daisies. But God's kept you alive because he ain't done with Anthony. God, I pray that you touch him today with such a supernatural voice. God, that his future will be so far greater than his past. God, in all the hurt of yesterday and all the betrayal and all the wrong decisions eradicated, there stands a clean man who loves you and wants to serve you. I ask you to touch him now in Jesus' name. Would everybody stand to your feet and give God praise and hug about four or five people and see these people that came to the altars and prayed and hug on them and tell them I, I loved your boldness, I loved your courage, and know that God is touching them for a new place and a new season. Hug four or five people. Tell them I love you and I love the Favor Nation. Tell four or five people I love you. You guys watching by way of internet, we're not going to apologize by what time it is. You will give more time to the movies than what you gave today. But we want to thank you for watching and staying with us. We're going to learn some things Wednesday night. We want to invite you to take communion with us Wednesday night. We want you to uh, go and get you some grape juice and some bread and get your children. And you can stand in front. Uh, 
or sit in front of your TV and we will partake of communion here and all over the iChurch, okay? So let everybody know, share it, repost it. I'll talk about it tomorrow and Tuesday on Morning Motivation. Hey, I love you guys. And listen, the rest of your life is the best of your life. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. In Jesus' name. Take us away, guys.